And keep clapping. Keep clapping. Bring Maya Osborne back to the stage. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. She makes her way up here. I'm a quadroon. Now, it's possible that these words and my story are coming at you too soon, and, and maybe I should wait until that Obama is a mulatto, that's the one drop rule shit fades through the American conscience. And maybe my story is just a little too honest. I'm Mark Osborne, Maya's dad. We actually had a nickname for her, the Amazing Maya. That, that nickname, I don't know, maybe she was a couple years old, probably came out. And I still think it applies more than ever now. A little too harsh a reminder of civil rights false promises. A little too bright is the light in my skin that sheds light upon what lactification trauma is. These are the confessions of a quadroon. Confessions of a quadroon is absolutely um, my most well-known piece of work and my most requested by family and friends. Someone who is three-fourths Massa and one-quarter Coon. Someone who, who changes colors based on the racial makeup of the room. Which is beautiful because um, it is a poem about me taking ownership of my racial identity, which is something that I have struggled with and will continue to struggle with every day of my life. The only time I've been mixed up in my race is in the world's haste to put me in a category to strip Maya was in a private school for a while, you know, and, you know, she, she came home saying she wanted blonde hair, she, she wants straight hair, you know. It's kind of a painful feeling sometimes when you, when you realize that your kid has a sense of not really fitting in wherever they are, and sometimes that really comes home. There have been countless moments because of my coloring that I have, that my black experience has been negated by others. And I have been told that I cannot live a black, I, that I'm not black, that I cannot live a black experience. But my lived experience of having to change myself between white and black proves that there's still that divide. Of my yin and yang reality, see, I wouldn't even exist before color TV. And even then, I'd be an anomaly. Uh, go out and try to trick whitey girl type baby. Yes, these, these are my confessions. My name is Maya Osborne. I'm 20 years old. And today, I identify as black. If you got my mom in here right now, Moni, and asked her to sit down with me and talk about, or to identify racially, simply and clearly, um, while I wouldn't like to speak for her, I do think that she would say biracial or mixed race. I'm like 85% sure she wouldn't say black. My name is Monica Osborne and I am Maya's mom. My mother is from North Germany, um, Bremerhaven, and my father is from South Carolina. I consider myself African American. To hear that my mother identified as African-American off the bat, no thought, no hesitation. That's something I've been waiting to hear my whole life. I was hoping, of course, that she would say that, but I had no idea that she would, and I think that perhaps she did always identify that way, but maybe hid that from us or didn't assert that with us so that we would find our own identities. I just gotta get it off my chest so I do this shit instead of therapy sessions. I spit in rhythmic bits cracked like Pangea's continents as split apart as is my racial confidence. See, I wish I had some instructions. A guidebook for the colorblind or something. I find that there are many African Americans who are much lighter than me. Uh, and even if they don't have one white parent, they obviously have a lot of um, European blood mixed in them. Because I've never heard her say I'm black. Never. I've never heard her say I'm African American. I've heard her say I'm African American and German um, to people who ask her what she is or where she's from. Um, so it, that's, that's awesome. I've never been so happy to be wrong, <laughs> to be 85% wrong. <laughs> you see, I secretly believe that when they noose pulled my uncle's soul from his flesh, they just wanted to see an impossible thing, a Negro gone free. 
And oh, how they bared witness as he became God again. Some men just got nightmares inside them. These are my confessions. I hope that one day my father can just sit down with my 14-year-old brother and talk about how he, how he identifies and if he, you know, is growing into a strong black man. But I think that um, there are too many conversations that are not being had. And so that conversation is so far down on the list that it might never happen. Um, I want my beautiful 17 year old sister, no matter how she identifies, to be able to talk to her dad about how the white girls pick on her for her frizzy hair and brown skin. I don't want her to have to reach out to her mother who happens to be living in another country. And so that connection is lost. I want her to be able to feel comfortable enough in her own house with her father and have that conversation because it will affect the relationships that she has with men for the rest of her life. Other and her image and self-worth and feeling that she is beautiful because she Something to keep these veins away from self-destruction, to keep this brain away from that color-coded corruption that I can see everywhere. These are the confessions of someone who's never felt fully there, who's never in sync, like writing blue in the classroom when everyone else has got black ink. Oh wait, I've got a little black too. How do you feel knowing, because I asked you the question, yeah. um, how do you feel knowing that when asked the same exact question, how do you self-identify that she said and her words were that day, she says, today, I self-identify as black. How do you feel about that? Maya. Hmm. So, so, uh, should I repeat that question? I asked Maya. Yeah. How do you self-identify? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Her exact words were, today, I self-identify as black. Yeah, yeah. I think it's very difficult for Mark to accept the fact that his children would identify as being black. Um, and I don't think it's really a racial issue. I think it's more of a father wanting to have that bond with his kids. Um, he wants them to be able to relate to him. Um, and there's certain things about being black that he could never relate to. No matter how many African drum classes he takes, no matter how much world music he knows, he would never be able to understand the experience of being a black person. Maya has one of her lines about Obama in her quadroon poem. She talks about Obama, you know, uh, kind of consciousness or that we're in now. And, and um, it's funny, I mean, to have a, a mixed race president, but of course he's a black president. He's the black president. Uh, you know, it's, it's so true. I mean, it's, it's so unfair to his white uh, mom, in a way. And I feel that sometimes too. Like when you said Maya identifies as black, well, okay, I guess I got negated out of this, you know. Uh, you know, I guess, you know. Um, and, and, and in a way, society does that to create a, one drop of blood, or if you're an eighth of octoroon, you're black. Man, it's unfair to be the white parent in that formula. Said, I've got a little black too. I've got a little black too. Well, great, now you can color me till I am black and blue, bruised from being beaten with my own confused roots. These are the confessions of a quadroon. Someone who never knew. No how matter to be black, whether Maya marries Irish. someone black or someone white, her kids are going to be mixed raced. And, you know, it'd be really wonderful if the next generation of mixed race kids could be more accepted and feel more a part of the community and feel more love. Um, and just to have people have a more of an understanding 
that um, what it does to a kid to always be made to feel like you were on the outside of every group. The man that I married and the father of my children will have so much love in his heart that his race or my race or the race of our kids will be such a non-issue that we will be able to raise beautiful, loving people to send out into this world next. I don't precisely know what it would take <laughs> to overcome racism in this country. I think that's a big question that we all need to think on. But I do know that my lived experience of always being different and knowing that I am always in some way different than the person standing next to me has absolutely taught me to accept and value all people of all backgrounds. So they told me to pray, so I prayed to God. I prayed to God asking him to tell me what to do and when I asked he told me, child, your life would be easier if you were to just pass. I would live an easier life if I were to just pass for white. But you know what? That don't quite feel right. 